It's real talk. Are you guys curious about what pharmacy school is actually like? Well, in today's video, I have a really special guest, pharmacy vlogger, Sagar, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce his last name. <laughs> Dude, it is pretty embarrassing. I got Sagar's uh, name completely, wow, my computer went off. I got Sagar's name completely wrong. So if you don't know, I do a lot of SEO research, some YouTube research about the other pharmacists online, and I like to invite him onto my channel just to chat. One of the people that I, I saw was Sagar, right? He goes by coded like a capsule and all that, but he started creating YouTube vlogs of pharmacy school and I thought wow this is so freaking cool because here's the thing we don't have too many pharmacy vloggers uh, going through pharmacy school and it's so you know I'm just and people have this curiosity what is pharmacy school like and for me even though I have some vlogs from back in the day I can't go back in time and capture those moments and edit all those those moments right so it's kind of really cool to see this guy this guy look at that smile bro this guy kind of document his uh, pharmacy journey and stuff. I really I really had a great experience. We really talk about a lot of different things. We talk about how to blend, um, we talk about what it's like starting a ph pharmacy blog while balancing school. How do you balance coursework and all that sort of stuff too. Um, one of the things that really sticks out to me is that he's all about creating memories more than just like, you know, it's really easy to get in the trenches of pharmacy school and just focus purely on your grades. But at the end of the day, coming from someone who graduated pharmacy school, who still talks to his pharmacy friends, the truth is a lot of pharmacy people kind of like, damn, I wish I didn't work so hard in pharmacy school. I wish I made more connections and all that. And I think Sagar really talks about a lot about that during this interview, right? So if you guys are curious to see what pharmacy school is like, make sure to check out this video, check out this whole pharmacy red pill pharmacy podcast. And if you want to follow Sagar too, I'll leave all his links below. Um, but yeah, snuggle up, grab your sig fig, watch this whole video in its entirety because it's quite long. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and we will start the podcast in three, two, one. Whoop. Yeah, dude, it's so like, oh, we're live. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> oh, okay, it's, all good. It's, so gr it's so great to just have you on the podcast, man. Especially like someone who is, um, you know, kind of creative and uh, mm -hmm. doing creative things in the pharmacy, man. Uh, it's great yeah. having you, man. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I mean, like, as I, I told you before, straight, straight up, that you're probably one of the first people I've ever watched. It was you and, uh, I forgot the name. Not oh, sure. Sure. Uh, Tran the farm I, his last name is I, yeah. I forget but he's engineer really true. yeah he's also bald I I, I try copying yeah. style bro <laughs> yeah, yeah no, so it's it's pretty pretty dope that I'm talking to you right now so thanks for the input no nah, man it's it's really cool because um I always encourage like students like you guys like dude start more pharmacy vlogs and shit like one of the things about like if you I'm not sure if you've seen any nursing people or especially doctors they mm. blow the fuck up and yeah, it's don't crazy. What the fuck we do half the time, man. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So tell me, like, I'm kind of interested in your origin story, man. Like, how did uh, this whole pharmacy vlogging go, man? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it all started off. Of, I'm like huge on watching movies and shows and YouTube. So I watch tons. I mean, like, when I tell you tons, like, I'm on YouTube for hours. I'm sure anyone who makes videos probably watches YouTube quite a bit. Yeah. But I kept watching YouTube and all I could see was med school vlogs, uh, pre-med student vlogs. There's almost nothing out there for pharmacy, someone who posts consistently about pharmacy school. So at first it was kind of like a dream, like, all right, maybe I'll start vlogging and stuff. And then I started making like day in the life at Rutgers. I mean, I already said Rutgers, whatever. It's <laughs> uh, like a regular college student vlogs. But the thing about YouTube is you have to really concentrate like for a certain audience. Um, and then I, I kind of had the misconception that I needed a camera to vlog. I couldn't just use my phone. So I told my parents, like, oh, I want to buy a camera. And then my dad was like, you're going to buy it, and then you're not going to use it. You're going to waste your money or whatever. So um, I, I was working weekends at a pharmacy once a month, and then I got a job on campus. I was those, like, annoying kids that call your phone, asking for donations. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked, there, I worked there for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I worked there for like a year, year and a half. And on my birthday, my friends gave me a gift card for Best Buy to buy a camera. So I used some of the money I made and the money I made from uh, that I got from my friends. And I bought a camera. And the next day, I made my first vlog. And I think that was the one that went the most, it has the most views already. It's like at 15K right now. But it's kind of weird to think that like immediately right after I got that camera in the mail, I was so excited. I just started making vlogs. Dude, what camera was it? That was the A5100, the same one I'm still using. Uh, yeah. A5100. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I think that's a misconception about vlogging and stuff. Like, dude, you can shoot great, great content just through your phone. I mean, yeah. obviously, it doesn't look as sexy, right? Uh, like, as like an A7 III uh-huh. or whatever. But, yeah. um, yeah, you really don't need that much, man. And it's, that's such an inspiring story that uh, you with your first camera, like your, your first video, your first vlog got like 15 K man. That's really good. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I think the uh, phone is, it's amazing to use. I mean, the phones these days, great quality. And plus it's so easy. You just pull it out of your pocket and you start recording. Like what's your camera? It's, I'm always scared of dropping it, leaving it somewhere. So the phone has been my go-to. Yeah, bro. If you ever get a chance, you should get a G seven X man. That is my favorite camera. Like I've seen, I've seen the videos on that. The quality on that is absolutely insane. Dude, I dropped that shit down a mountain. Like no. literally, I was hiking and I was like, it fell off my uh my like Joby tripod. Like the, uh, yeah, the plate. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it dropped down the whole mountain and it's still intact to this it day. It still worked after that. Yeah, I prefer that camera over like this camera that I'm using right now because it's so portable. You shove it in your yeah. pocket and guess what? 1.8 aperture. I know everybody's like, what the fuck is Kevin talking about? But it's really yeah, good yeah, at yeah. low light when it's dark. Like, yeah, it's just it's so well. beautiful. So yeah, but I have to really mention too, on your vlogs, you do high, like I edit, but I know I do like very, very, very low quality jump, like cut, like really choppy, cut like uh type of edits but your edits you have re- you got good transitions and all that sort of stuff too yeah. how did that all start i think um so even before i got a camera i was using final cut pro yeah and i was just recording random stuff like i watched so many tutorials on how to do these edits yeah. but um i can't really take credit for like me like learning about that myself i think a lot of the inspiration comes from like youtubers i'm not sure if you heard like justin escalona yeah um, yeah yeah like those like young young guys that make these like cool videos and you kind of look up to that and you try to reproduce the like, casey neistat type styles yeah i kind of just like mush it all together and then throw my own things into it well i um, think that's so the best kind of the- like there's yeah. like so many different people out there that have their own styles so. well i think that's the best way to find your own style is just like hey model af- after other successful people that you really admire about and then somewhere in the middle you find your own shit so that's awesome man how long have you been doing that for um i think so even in my first vlog that i dropped i started doing that but yeah. um, i used to borrow so <laughs> yeah i struggled quite a bit with having a camera but i used to borrow my cousin's camera my mm-hmm. friend's cameras. I would just like ask them, oh, can I take it hiking for a day? And I'll give it back to you the day after. Yeah. So I just record it and then just spend the whole day like editing it on my laptop and then not really having it anywhere to post. So I just put it on Instagram or something like that. <laughs> but those are all the throwback things. that I, Sometimes some of them I took down. Some of them I still have on my laptop. No. Dude, that's so amazing because you know what? I know, I don't think I've ever told anyone this, but I actually shot a whole, like actually I have all my pharmacy vlogs but it's on like a fucking eye touch because I went to school. Like you, people are like, what the fuck is the eye touch? But I went to school, like pharmacy school in 2010 to 2013. Uh-huh. And uh, this is before like there were any like major, this was like before there was any pharmacy YouTubers and stuff. The only person was like Paul Tran, right? Uh-huh. Um, That's and I have exactly. my, yeah. And I have my whole, like a uh, whole vlog shot, like fucking this. I was like, <laughs> fuck me, dude. <laughs> Um, but what I really want to do is kind of eventually share that one day because I was pretty freaking ratchet. I have like literally us going to Vegas, us doing like oh man in Vegas, like it's fucking it's yeah. fucking insane what happens in farm school, man. Um, yeah, and and the thing about that, like I, I'm glad you mentioned it, like the whole partying and stuff. It's kind of hard since I am basically like a farm school YouTuber guy, like putting the whole having fun aspect of it without looking like you're a bad student or having people judge you on that. Yeah. That's kind of difficult because, you know, it's college for me. 
I, I've only been in college for four years, so I'm technically a senior. Yeah. It's a six-year program. So um, I, li- I like to show, because a lot of the people I watch right now, like the med school YouTubers, they don't really put too much of just going out and stuff. But I feel like here at my college, I have a good group of friends where I get to go out. I get to show people that it's not all about just studying. Like yeah and i that's one thing i don't really like the pharmacy culture that we have is just like it's so fake because at the end of the day behind closed doors we all know that uh we're a bunch of degenerates right now well, um that we're all human right we do yeah, exactly. and like i st- like dude i used to go i i went clubbing every single weekend when i was in farm school and shit like i used to party yeah. a lot but um i don't think that makes you a bad pharmacist or a bad yeah. person mm-hmm. you know um and i think like that transparency is so freaking important and i'm glad that you're sharing that because one of my visions for my initial like youtube channel was just to kind of show behind the scenes of like what a pharmacist like is like you know someone who gets like crazy ass well back when i had hair like gets crazy ass thing or talks about getting a penis piercing or like any of that sort of stuff right like outlandish things yeah people that that normal people like regular people day-to-day will do it's just like since you're a pharmacy student or you're in like a graduate school, you got to be more professional or just professionalism. More professional. Yeah. But yeah. And, but somehow it's okay and professional to steal a bunch of like to rip off a bunch of students on tuition loans and stuff like yeah. that sometimes, man. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Um, anyways, tell me about farm school. How are you doing in farm school and what made you want to go into pharmacy? Tell me. Um, okay. Yeah. Time. So I guess I'll start off with like, I'll go in timeline order of why I want to do pharmacy. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of crazy, but um, in f- kindergarten or first grade, I had a, I was like student of the month or something like that. And <laughs> you remember that far watched, back? Yeah, 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 this is crazy. So this, this happened my first year of pharmacy school. I'm watching home videos Yeah. and it was like me getting an award or something. And then the principal goes, Sagar wants to pursue a career and uh, he wants to become a doctor or a pharmacist. I was like, I said that way back. I don't even remember. But um, I have uh, an uncle and an aunt that are both in pharmacy. Mm-hmm. One's more, he did a director of pharmacy in a hospital. So he was more of like a hospital pharmacist where kind of managed things in a hospital. And then yeah. my aunt is actually in uh, San Francisco and she's in the industry. Um, and then I think it, I, at that point, I didn't really know what they did, but I saw that the lives that they led. So I think that's what inspired me the most was how much... I guess, I guess the money was good. They were having, they had a good family, nice house. He, she travels so much. And I was just like, I think that's what I want for myself. Like they enjoyed their careers, but they also enjoyed their lives. Mm. And then I remember this was PP2 year. So and for those who don't know, you do, in my program, you do two years of pre-professional pharmacy and then four years of pharmacy school. Yeah. Cause you went straight from high school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think in my PP2 year, I was kind of having like a mental breakdown where I was like, you know, it's kind of hard for someone who's not even 20 years old or just turned 20 to decide this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, so I was at that point, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do pharmacy. What if I would like, what if I could have pursued a career in like film directing or something like crazy, something that was like, you know, amazing or like really like creative and out there. But um, I think I went to pharmacy school with like my mind. I was open to everything. And I just, I think having because when you take orgo and like gen chem man that it sucks it actually <laughs> sucks like no enjoyment don't tell don't, no one can tell me they enjoy orgo i actually i actually don't tell me you enjoyed it i did it was kind of like playing with fucking legos bro oh my but god it's funny I'll, I'll comment i'll let you continue your story but what's really funny is like that's probably the one of the most common questions i ever get on my channel hey do i have to be good at chemistry or i have to be good at orgo do farm but yeah continue your story sorry about that yeah but um one thing i do have to say i enjoyed biology so i enjoy learning that um and then farm school was a lot more like biology than chemistry for me yeah a lot about learning about the body um same here uh, like i think that's a huge misconception mm-hmm. that people think it's all chemistry uh, it's actually a lot more bio and anatomy uh, anatomy yeah. and physiology exactly yeah so even my dad was like man like you're not doing well in chemistry and we're like how are you gonna do chem- uh pharmacy like isn't that all chemistry and once i got to pharmacy school and i realized it wasn't i was like <laughs> man i could do this like i actually like i don't know so if you don't like when i went to high school i went to a healthcare based high school so uh it was like an academy 
Oh, so you went to X Men for like fucking future pharmacists, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think my whole life I was surrounded about like science and medicine, and I enjoyed it. My parents never forced me into anything. It was all really just up to me. They're open with everything. But my sister actually, she's graduating med school in a couple months. Sweet. And my other sister is an occupational therapist. So um, I've known all the routes. I think that's why I had the insider information of what I want to do. Yeah. So I think in general, when I got to pharmacy school, man, I'm like enjoying my time. Like the classes are hard. Like they're hard as shit. Like I've never imagined myself to sit down and study for so long and read. But I think the payoff with, I know the saturation is kind of hard and difficult to get like jobs and stuff. But here at Rutgers, like the whole, I'm in a pharmaceutical fraternity. So that I guess made that even better for me to be in farm school. But I've just seen people and my friends like firsthand nature, like get these jobs that, you know, I see their snap stories and Instagram stories. And I'm like, man, that that looks amazing. Like my my friends in MSL now. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, dude, he lives, he lives in, he like lives in Philly, and the way he talks about it, like he loves it. Yeah. So I think that's what I want to provide with this channel is like a lot of people when you go to pharmacy school, if you don't make the right connections and stuff, you can't really find this information out. Yeah, and you're kind of left with the notion of that like, you're kind of stuck because a lot of people go to pharmacy school, they don't really want to do pharmacy, but it's kind of safe, you know? Yeah, yeah, that that's so true, and I think you're actually doing a great thing uh for the pharmacy people out there because um there are a lot of different career paths other than just retail and hospital and actually that this is why what inspired this kind of like podcast style and that's probably yeah. why you're here because one day i was just like man there's so many different pharmacists out there doing really cool things like i've been following you for a while dude like maybe uh, i don't know a few months back or something like that yeah yeah and um yeah man it's like it's so great to see that uh your friends and people like like i at the end of the day i don't think it's like the school that makes the opportunities for you it's definitely yourself right Mm -hmm. and the connections you make and i really like that emphasis that you're putting but anyways continue your story man um i think i think that was like basically it i think my enjoyment of pharmacy school um it doesn't just come from learning i think a lot of it a lot more of it just comes from the people like around me yeah yeah. Some still, some still my best friends, man. I met my best friends in farm school. Yeah, I'm sure everyone sees in my vlogs like my one of my three best friends. Oh, we call ourselves the pharmacisters. That's kind of funny. The I'm pharmacist, what? Uh, yeah, but man, like they've been through it with me like for years. Yeah, I think every day we spend time together, we study together. Um, it's kind of amazing just like how close you can be with people. And then yeah. there's like there's you know. The thing about pharmacy school, it's like, it's not all about your best friends. It's just about the random people you meet and they kind of tell you something. Maybe they'll give you a study tip, which actually works or just like random stuff. People you meet when you're working. It's kind of nice. I enjoy my time here. So I think um, everyone has a different experience in pharmacy school, I guess, from what you do. But I've just always been heavily involved with meeting new people. So I think that's what makes it. Dude, you remind me so much of myself, man. Like back in farm school, like, dude, I was always about people. I was always about going out. I was not like, yeah, of course you have to study and stuff too. But mm-hmm. I was always like, I was like, we don't have this time for a short amount of time. Like, dude, let's yeah. meet as many cool people as we can. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and what you said right now, like, we don't have that much time. I think, yeah. dude, I know you, you think you said I'm young, like I'm 22. Yeah. But um. A lot of my friends are graduating this year and I think it kind of hit me like, dude, like they're going to be working jobs and it's like nine to five. You don't get the weekends off. Like you don't get to spend time with your friends this, like this much time with your friends ever again in your life. Like after college is done, you're, you're going on, you're like working a job, you're getting through that and all that. So, yeah. um, you know what's really interesting about that? Like I have a lot of friends who are real high back in the day and, yeah. um, they're like, Dude, what was all that for, man? I wish I didn't work so hard because I could have just had more fun, met cooler people. I was like, dude, that is exactly what I'm, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You, know, you end up in the same place as a lot of other people. And uh, yeah, man, it's just like, it's an, ex- people forget it. it's an experience that we have in our life, man. And it's just like, so you gotta just enjoy that shit while you're in it, man. Yeah, I think I, I, even since high school, my parents always knew that I wasn't always academically focused. Like, I, I was pretty smart. Like, I get good grades. But yeah. it's never been, um, like, I don't want to say it hasn't been top priority. Like, the top priority for me is to graduate from school. Yeah. But it hasn't been a priority where I 
forget about everything else in my life. I think you could easily slip into like sadness and depression if that's all you think about all day. And uh, my friend just got into Rokai. She's super smart yeah. and she manages her time perfectly. But some people, everyone's not the same, you know? And for me, grades have been there. Like it's been important, but I think I've slowly learned that it's not everything and it's not even close to everything. So that's, it's a lesson a lot of people learn. Some people never learn it, but I'm glad I, I've always felt this way. And that's just like, part of who I am I would never uh, I don't ever see myself being a straight A student past like high school I didn't get straight A's it's and just not who I am and, and, here's, and here's the thing it's okay to not yeah, be that okay. person too right it's yeah. completely fine I feel like yeah if you want to be a professor or want to well not even professor if you want to be like a pharmacologist and know every single fucking detail about things there's roles for that but there's also mm-hmm. roles for people like us who just like meeting people connecting people and all that sort of stuff man um, pretty interesting what you're saying right now too is because I actually have a pharmacy mentee um, yeah so funny I'm not like practicing pharmacy but I have uh-huh. a pharmacy mentee and we we're talking about connections and I think the turning point that he had that grades weren't everything was when he met his first pharmacy director and uh-huh. now he's like dude they're working together <laughs> that's his new mentor now and oh, wow. I'm just like okay okay blah 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 what, what do you think is gonna what do you think is gonna set you apart from from uh like when you're applying to a job what do you think is gonna set you apart knowing a pharmacy director at that hospital or yeah. or getting good grades in row kai like every other app <laughs> right yeah yeah no it's it's uh, i mean it's scary to say like nowadays but yeah. man networking is next to everything when getting a job if they know who you are or they've heard good things about you, man, like that means a lot more than your GPA. Cause man, physically, if you look at your resume, the GPA is such a small, like it's right on the top and it's tiny. Something they'll read at first, they're just gonna forget about it. But the other bulk of it, your cover letter, everything that you're gonna talk about yourself and how you present yourself, yeah. man, that, that makes a lot. Yeah, dude, when you go on your interviews, are you gonna ever say like, hey, you know, I do pharmacy books? <laughs> no, uh, I, I have an interesting story. Um, yeah. uh, I actually interviewed, it was with a pretty big, uh, it was for like an internship. Yeah. Um, I can't say the name of the company because I, yeah. I don't think it's loud, but um, one of the interviewers actually watches my book videos. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So that was, I think this was very recent and I think that was like a, like I, they asked about my GPA too. They're just like, you know, there's it's a lot of competitive, uh, competitive uh, students out here like with their they have really high GPAs and stuff. And I was like, what sets you apart? And I talked about my videos and he was just like, yeah, like I've watched your videos. And I was like, no way. This is like a, this is like a guy in the industry, you know, he's like quite older than me and stuff, but yeah, pretty, pretty dope to hear that. Yeah. You, it's so funny. You never know who's watching, man. That's the, that's the thing about YouTube. And it's just like, yeah. Hey, you know, at that point, they know your personality. They know who you are. And plus like if, if you're young and you're partying, that's like very understandable. I'd rather have someone go through that phase and stuff like that. It's like, they're, they're not going to just be like, Oh, it's unprofessional, man. No, you're freaking 22. You just turned yeah. 21. Exactly. like a year ago. Right. So yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. People recognize you. Like, does that happen a lot by the way? Um, usually with the younger pharmacy students, like the freshmen or sophomore, yeah. so some of them watch already watch my vlogs when they're looking at our school and stuff. Yeah. They'll come up to me and say, yeah, watch your vlogs or they'll say hi, but nothing too crazy. Like, it's not like I go out and everyone's like, oh, like, I know who you are because pharmacy is still a small world, you know? So just go to uh, ASHP mid year <laughs> or APHA. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, like, seriously, um, my friend Brian, I encouraged him to start his YouTube channel. Actually, his first video wasn't on his channel, it was on my fucking channel. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I was like, dude, you're the informatics guy. You could easily dominate this niche and just really teach people about everything. And like, it was so great because uh, we went out one time uh, here in LA. He came to visit me. We went uh, uh-huh. out to a bar or a club and one yeah. of our fans actually recognized both of us. And that was no the first time I was with him, you know, and you know, <laughs> like, yes, he recognized me too. That means we're both up there in the game. <laughs> it's it's cool man i mean it's one thing for me to get recognized it happens like when i go to like especially like when i go clubs now like what i'm 30 31 now dude like fuck Mm -hmm. when i go clubbing like a bunch of usc like i remember one of my freaking um 
uh, interns like came up to me and like, oh hey, I'm like, oh fuck, like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, pretend I'm not here. <laughs> no, I'm cool with it. I'm like, well, I'm kind of like that ratchet pharmacist too. I'm just like whatever about stuff, but um, you know, like, um, I think it, like that's the whole personality thing, right? And I I take great pride in like helping other pharmacists and really connecting other pharmacists and encouraging them to do YouTube. Then I think it's like one of the things that makes me really really happy because. Like I said, I definitely with pharmacy. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like, like I said, people don't really know what we do half the time. Exactly. You know? I mean, I can't tell you, like, if I go through my Instagram messages, the amount of times I answer, like, probably the same question. Like, a lot of people, are like, oh, what career options are there? Well, how do you feel about the saturation? And it's just a lot of people have a lot of questions that they can't really get answered because they don't know people in the position. And then, a lot of people don't advocate for pharmacy or show what's happening in pharmacy school. Yeah. So they're just kind of just like misled into, I mean, some people, you know, there might be students out there that don't know how that, that pharmacy could be a perfect fit for them. And then there's also students that might go into pharmacy when it's not a good fit for them. And then you end up regretting it. So I think me providing information and then answering their questions. I mean, I try to I answer every single message I get. Yeah. I try to give them the best answer that I can give. Because in I'll give the most honest answer. Someone today messaged me and was like, hey, I'm not sure if I'm going to do pharmacy school because, you know, it might be too hard. But I also don't never really thought about becoming a pharmacist. But I got accepted into the program, so should I do it? I told her, like, I think first do what you want to do. Just because you get into the program doesn't mean you have to do it. So yeah, think that's great advice. Know. That's great advice right away. A lot of people, a lot of people do that. Like, it's a safe program. It's six years. But – Man, if you're not into it, that's a lot of years to waste on something that you just went because it was safe. Mm. So I think that's that's my biggest advice to anyone, um, especially for a career like pharmacy and even med school. Um, you had to be passionate, and I think med school you med school you had to be a little bit more passionate because that's a lot of your life to give up. Um, and it's kind of hard to go other routes with med school. You become a doctor, and then you get a specialty in your doctor, but with pharmacy, it's kind of cool because you could go into maybe the industry if you're into that or a hospital if you're into that or retail if you're into that. Yeah. But the only problem with pharmacy is that it's saturated. So you have to really differentiate yourself before anything else. And I think the best way to not only differentiate yourself like and to find like the to see if it's for you or not, because, you know, what you want and what I want are are going to be completely different, right? Yeah. And so I think one of the things that we were talking about earlier was like the value of relationships. So if you are in that situation, one of the best things you can never do is like take take a look at what people are already doing now in pharmacy and reverse engineer that shit rather than just like, you know what, I'm going to go pharmacy school and figure it out. Hell no, that's like, that's a first of all, a lot of debt, a lot of time, a lot yeah. of resources that you're spending. You should really, like, if you're really in the, trying to figure it out take a look at someone who's really happy in pharmacy man, mm. and just be like hey uh brian fung he seems really happy about informatics i don't know why but you see <laughs> really really happy about informatics i want to be an informatic pharmacist maybe you go through their linkedin and take a look at what kind of stuff do they yeah. do and guess what if you like their shit take the extra mile be like reach out to them you know nothing like does it, it's not scary. Most people will not say no, especially if you're a student. Dude, yeah. that's the easiest, easiest. It's so easy, man. man. It's, it's, it's next. It's almost scary how easy it is to contact anyone. Yeah. You go on LinkedIn, man. It, even if it's, they take, if you take, like, I know uh, there's a Gary video of Gary V video on this and I've, I've practiced it. If you take like 15 minutes out of your day and just message people and ask them a question about something you're interested in, one, they'll answer it because people like talking about themselves and answering questions. Yeah. And two, you don't have to pay money for it. So why are you why are you wasting your time and not doing it? Just use your sources to your advantage, right? And just learn as much as you can. I think that's why whenever someone messages me, I kind of like it because they're taking time out of their day to hey, figure out you know something for themselves. Yeah, I'm always like I always take that gratitude out of the day. I'm just like fuck, dude. No one has to watch my videos, but they do anyways. Yeah. I'm not fucking great. But you want to know, do you want to know a cool tactic that I used to get a hold of like really, really high people? Let me know. Yeah. Will, well, now everybody else is going yeah, to know. Now everyone else is But uh, I haven't, I've actually never publicly talked about this on my channel. But oh, yeah. uh, one of the things that will really propel you, like open rates and stuff, 
is shooting someone a video on on the platform. So I, I use something called boom.com and literally I, I just shoot a video on my webcam and you know, you want, and when you're being more personal, like you definitely yeah. want shitty quality because that, that feels more homemade, right? Uh -huh. like, if it's too produced, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, kinda I'm gonna, weird. well, I'm going to give an X rated uh, analogy. It's kind of like the amateur porn versus like, <laughs> <laughs> versus professional, right? It has, a different, it has a different feel, right? And it mm -hmm. feels like you're at home. So when you shoot with like kind of like shitty quality, um, it's more personal that way. So I'll send yeah. something like, Hey, what's going on, uh, Dr. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I've been following your journey of becoming an informatics pharmacist, and I saw that you did X, Y, and Z. Dude, I would just love to connect. Let's connect over uh, Zoom or something like that, or like some video chat app. Promise I won't waste your time. Um, I would just love to kind of hear more about what you do, and more importantly, see how I can help you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm only down the street. I would love to do X, Y, Z. I mean, I have a, I have a more formal type of thing, but that's the general gist of what I do. And I yeah. think when you take the time to shoot a video, adds so much more personality. It does. And I noticed that, like you sent me a video. Yeah, of course. And, like <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about messages is, you know, someone could copy and paste a message and send it to everyone. Yeah. But a video, and if you're saying their name, like if you mention something very specific about them, then that's what changes everything. Cause then it's directed towards you, you know? So I think I, I've spent so much time like doing random, re I've read books on like, I read a book called The Like Switch, things like that. It's like random stuff that gives you like these little insiders of how to talk to people, like maintaining eye contact, but you don't want to, you don't want to kind of intimidate them, like look at them, but like, you know, like try to be more welcoming, things like that. And then your video, that's when I got it, and I showed my friends, I was like, yo, this guy that I used to watch on YouTube just sent me this message, like, damn, that's crazy. And, and it's like the thing about like things like that, it's like you didn't have to do that, but you wanted to do that. So it kind of makes me feel more welcome to you to, you know, get yeah. on this podcast. And here's the thing, you know what? You know what I've been doing as of half a year ago? And he went on my email. It takes me a little while. And this is the reason why it takes me so fucking long to reply to people. Uh, people yeah. always give me shit for it, but it's because I take the time actually to shoot a video back to everyone that asked me a oh, question. Wow. That requires a lot of freaking work. I'm just like, so you do that with uh, what? Do, do a lot of people contact you via email, or is it more yeah. towards like get a yeah a lot of email? Like my blog does really uh, it gets a, quite a bit of traffic, man. Um, oh. But yeah, people contact me through my email. People contact me through Instagram. Uh, I don't think anyone uses Snapchat, but I was getting a lot of contacts via Snapchat too, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man. It's just like such a more personal way to answer. It's actually, you know what's funny about that? It's actually a little quicker too. Is it? It's a little quicker. Yeah, it's a little quicker. It's not like, dude, I'm not doing any edits, dude. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. You're not doing like, hey, hey, man, I want you to be on my podcast and do like, like <laughs> fucking cut the scene and <laughs> have like music play in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you don't have some fancy ass B roll and shit with the yeah. crazy effects, man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, that whole I, I used to spend like a day or two editing vlogs. Now, this is what I do I record it. I, I put a lot less edits in my vlogs now compared to what I used to do. Sure. I finish my studying, and once it hits 2 3 a.m., hop on my laptop, edit for an hour. And I, some people might have noticed I upload like at 4 or 5 a.m. every morning, mm. but um. That's basically my way of like, it's a reward for myself because if I'm studying all day, if I'm doing work, then hey, like this is my time to, you know, upload in. I think I sacrifice, I, think, I don't think I sacrifice quality, but from what I did, I want to put out more because consistency is key to anything. Yeah, consistency is so much more important than uh, high quality, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like you gotta realize too, vlogs are just like, people want that personal connection. So they're okay with kind of shitty quality if it's like, if it's like, hey, a day in my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think you definitely, and, but no, it's so funny. Your, your low quality videos and when I compare like my edits because I don't know how to do shit with Final Cut Pro. <laughs> um, it's like, it's like a lot better. I'm like, this kid yeah. is going to grow yeah. a lot quicker 
And I'm pretty sure your your channel is gonna be one of the top channels already. I see the type of I see your consistency, and plus I see the high quality content too. I was like, I gotta reach out to this guy because he's gonna be really big, and I want to do everything to help uh, promote him to get him to that like next level, man. Yeah, so. like obviously, I mean, you anyone who does YouTube, like some people expect that you can make one video and you blow up, and YouTube is. No it's it's sometimes it's painful because it's something like i don't know what your situation is but for me it's like i don't get paid for this right like you know and i might never get paid for it you kind of have to look at it as in a way there way like you don't start youtube because you want the money because man that's that's a that's a crazy road you're heading for if you want if you're expecting millions straight off the bat but i do it because it's just what i like to do yeah um and you know if i don't ever make money from it whatever like when i'm like 30 years old and i get to watch like my vlogs from when i'm like 19 i'm gonna be like yeah this is sick like and then later on i'm gonna have kids and show them my videos and be like yo look what i was doing you know four generations imagine four generations down they're like oh let's go take a look at great great like grand grandpa (laughs) you know social media it's just crazy man like the the amount like I watch my old vlogs to this day. Me and my friends would just watch it just because it's funny to see yeah. like what we were doing and stuff. Yeah. Especially, yeah, man, it's, it's really great. And that's why it's so great that you're capturing all those memories. And that's why I'm actually going to hire an editor to do all my fucking old OG <laughs> like, pharmacy vlogs, but the OG vlogs. Yeah. The OG. Like, yeah. Yeah. I might, yeah. I'm going to, I'm probably going to do a series on like the OG, like, OG Kevin, Kevin Yee or whatever. I don't know. I got to think about it, but I want to talk about something that you said earlier. And it's just like, you don't think you're going to make money with it. And I, I actually disagree with that. Um, I think like with, uh, with YouTube and stuff, if you set the intention that, Hey, this is going to be profitable and this is going to mm-hmm. be a business, your action starts aligning to it. And you know what the crazy thing with YouTube is you don't have to sac- You don't have to be a sellout, dude. So yeah, tons of money on YouTube, right? Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, uh, for me, it's like, so, I mean, in a sense, I know I can make money off of it. Like, I, yeah. you know, as long as my, like, depending on how broad my reach gets, you know, sponsors, selling, like, merch, things like that. But I think what initially I feel like a lot of people ask is like, do you make money off of it? Yeah. And I think that's like, if I say no, then they might be a little bit discouraged. So I think that's when it, that's uh. when you know make the discrep like discrepancy that i do something that i love because i could my dad even asked me like hey are you making money off of it yet and it, in a way it's like i don't like when people try to correlate youtube to just doing it because you want to make money yeah because that that's that's one but yeah no you can definitely make money off of it it's just um yeah I do- yeah, I feel so strong. I know exactly what you're t- talking about because people used to ask me, are you making money with it? Yeah. And, uh, the whole thing is that um, it's like a, not a short term play. Yeah. It's a longer term play. Like, yeah. dude, when I first started YouTube, I didn't make a fucking single cent until 2016 or 17 when I actually monetized my channel. Damn it. I should have monetized my channel a lot sooner because I would have yeah. a lot quicker, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, because like, yeah, so I started making money and then the next step happened where like, um, where, what happened? So like when I left pharmacy, Mm -hmm. I wasn't making that much money on YouTube, but all of a sudden it just shot up like crazy. And it was so crazy. I was making a living on, on uh, my YouTube channel. Oh, really? I was making a living on my YouTube channel. I still actually still am. Uh-huh. Like it's it's afforded me to actually look for different clients and stuff on my yeah. business side, right? But isn't that freaking crazy? So that's why I'm just like, you're that, that's you're insane, money yeah. now. You're not thinking about money two, three years, ten years later. You know? Yeah, like yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like for me right now, if anyone's starting off with YouTube and you expect to just drop a video and make money, that's not how it works. Oh. Like people, some of the biggest YouTubers, they make money after like five years of creating video. And it's, yeah. it's, it's all about consistency and that you're willing to wait for that time. Well, like, I, um, I think it's even more important. It's just like, dude, you just got to build trust with people, right? If you want to look up anything on me, Kevin, you farm D 
I'm pretty. You have about 700 fucking videos to to get to know me, man. If you really, really want to get to know yeah. me, you know. And there's so much trust. And same with you. You're starting your farm vlogs, your daily ones, even though you say they're low quality. They're pretty fucking high quality, bro. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, like uh, honestly, like your shit is like really good. And I think like two, three years from now, you definitely won't regret the decision at all. And I am high, very confident that you will make money. But it's, the only thing is like, hey, there are some things that you, if you want to take it there, you have that option. But mm -hmm. if you don't ever start a YouTube channel, you're never going to have that option. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all about, I, man, I hate when people don't try something because they're scared to. Because if you fail, there's it's something like YouTube. If you fail, there's nothing that you're going to lose from it. It's just, all right, go on with whatever you're doing. But me, like I taking this opportunity was almost mandatory. Like I think I would re regret my whole entire life if I just went through pharmacy school and didn't do anything else. Cause anyone can go through pharmacy school and get good grades and get through it. Like yeah. not anyone can just get into Rokai, but if you try to study hard enough, you'll get to Rokai. Right. But that has been done before people have done that plenty of times over. Like there's kids ahead of me, there's kids younger than me that are all going to do that. And you know, they'll throw it on their resume. It'll become a great line on the resume. And it's a proud achievement. I mean, it's great to get to Rokai. It's great to do these clubs, become presidents in these clubs, but who's doing pharmacy YouTube? Uh, not any of my peers. So that's, that's when I was like, Hey man, like if this is something I like, why don't I just do it? Like, Hey, it's a good way for me to differentiate myself and also for me to have fun. So I think, I've really lucked out with just, you know, having something like this to do. No, you didn't luck out, man. You put in the heart, like you're, you're underselling yourself. You put in blood, sweat and years, man, going into your YouTube channel. And it's just like, <sighs> I, so I was in your shoes, like when I was in pharmacy school and I always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I never did. I mean, like I uploaded one pharmacy vlog. You can like, it's one of my earliest videos. We uh -huh. can still find it. It's like, it was my early pharmacy vlog and it's so cringy, but I always wanted to do YouTube and I never had the balls or anything like that. Like you're doing right now, which is really great because, you know, I think in business life, anything that you want, like, dude, we take time for fucking granted all the time. And until you like, until you lose someone that is really close to you or um, you're looking at like you're regretting so many things, you realize that, um, you, like with certain things, it's, it's honestly scarier not to do something than to do something half the mm -hmm. time, you know? And like, yeah, if you like, if you're, if for anybody that's watching this, I think it's important you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel, dude, just fucking do it, man. Don't even stop wasting all that time thinking about it. You're spending so many fucking hours and you could have had a video out by then, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that, 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 that advice could go to anything even past YouTube. Cause yeah. Like when I didn't have money in college, like obviously my parents provide like a lot for me. Right. Yeah. But I just wanted to have a little bit of spending money where I could get my own things. Don't have to rely on my parents, things yeah. like that. Cause I, I've had a job since high school. So yeah. since high school into college, I've always had a job, but nothing too consistent. And then I just thought to myself, like, you know, what if I get like a part-time job here at college where I'll just have some money. Cause I was already working one job, but it was more just for experience rather than I was a farm tech. I'm still a farm tech. Yeah. Than the money. Cause I don't have a car on, on campus or anything. So I can't really go there often. Yeah. But, and it was kind of embarrassing to like tell people like, Hey, I work at like the telephone where I call like um, alumni and ask for donations. Cause people associate that with annoying people that call your phone. Yeah. So I think like a lot of people in my shoes or a lot of people in my peers would never ever think about working that job. Yeah. Cause you're sitting there on the phone with the headset and you're calling constantly. Yeah. But for me, it was kind of like, Hey, I, I don't have a car so I could walk to this job and two, I'll make some good money and I could study while I'm at this job. And I ended up meeting friends that I'm still friends with now, um, made a good amount of money. And, uh, obviously I had to quit cause of my schedule is now like crazy as a PC. Yeah, I'm but, sure it's fucking ridiculous. But, but dude, that is such a great story. Um, because um, I think, I think you're a lot like, dude, we are so similar because I don't know how many people would like ever quit being like, for me, I quit pharmacy to do yeah, my so. own sales and closing agency. Mm -hmm. And people, the reason why people kind of look down on those things, even though they make a lot of money, you're actually helping way more people doing it. 
Uh-huh. People look down on it because they're actually scared to do it themselves. It is, it is a pretty fucking scary job. Like talking. Scary. To yeah, home, no. Right? I mean, especially in your shoes, man. Like, it's hard to imagine because you went through a lot of schooling and stuff, and now you're doing something where, you know, not necessarily, you didn't have to become a pharmacist to do this. But, like, I could see that you obviously like it. You have the, the signs right behind you. Like, this is something you're yeah. passionate about. So, yeah. like, what if, you know how you regretted not doing vlogs in pharmacy school, right? Yeah. Like, what if 10 years from now, you just kept becoming, being the pharmacist, and you're like, shit, you know, I should try this other thing. Yeah. Well, I guess you got to work on eliminating your regrets. Just do what you want to do. And then, <laughs> dude, and then you just feel it all, dude, I'll tell you this story. It's pretty funny, man. <laughs> like, yeah. So like you, I was actually a farm tech, but I was in farm tech since, yeah, how long have you been a farm tech since you started? Um, like almost a year and a half, year. year okay. And a half, yeah. So I started when I was actually first going to college right uh-huh. like, uh and i was a farm tech and i was like man this kind of <laughs> this kind i kind of don't like this man <laughs> but like people are like hey it'll just get better as it, it'll just get better with time yeah and i was like okay there's just like wait till you're an intern i'm like okay i'm an intern now uh, this kind of sucks yeah. then the pharmacist is like it'll be better when you're a pharmacist right and so i go up this i i make it always a pharmacy manager i was trying to chase a um, a pharmacy supervisor position, right? So you were in retail, right? You were in retail. Yeah. Yeah. And then I did grocery chain too. And then I was like, you know what, Kevin, you've been listening to all these people for the last 11 years. You spent 11 fucking years in pharmacy and it's never gotten better. Maybe it's just not the right fit for you. And Uh I was like, it's a, yes, community. It's its own like thing, but I was searching other different things and I was constantly talking to people and other like fields of pharmacy. And I was just like, you know what? It's, it's sometimes best to just go with your gut and your initial feeling. And if you know that it's not for you, you should just walk away. And that's mm-hmm. what I did, man. I literally had the position that most pharmacists would have fucking killed for. I literally went on an interview and I did really well. And I was uh-huh. like, you know what? I'm not taking this job. Yeah. And I walked away from it. It was to be like a advanced practitioner of pharmacists, man. Yeah, yeah, that that takes that takes balls. Like, man, like I don't know, like when I, I work in retail, I did my rotations in community, and the head pharmacist. I'm glad there's people like this in my life that kind of they they tell me beforehand, like, hey, like I make good money, right? Like I support my family, I'm I'm making decent money, but I can tell that this is not what you want to do with the rest of your life. So, um, and especially with retail, man, like the, I work at a supermarket right now, but um. There, soon it's going to close down. It's going to be the big competitors like CVS and Walgreens. Yeah. And I don't ever see myself being a retail pharmacist. And for them, this is what they've been doing since they graduated because it was promised like good money because you take a pay cut when you go into industry. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's something that they kind of regret because now it's hard for them to go change their industry. And so if you got to be really outstanding, people are going to ask you questions on why you went from, did so many years in retail and now you're trying to get to industry. So, and they already have, like, now they have a kid. They have other responsibilities, college to pay for it. So it's kind of being stuck. So yeah. I'm glad that there's people like that in my life that direct me towards, you know, following what I want to do. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's so great that you have such supportive people in your life. But you know what? You know, as I'm talking more and more, I have, like, I'm going to make a prediction. And we can see in, like, 10 years if I'm right or wrong. But, uh my prediction is that actually you're not going to do like, I don't, I don't foresee you staying in pharmacy forever. Maybe that's what you want right now, but uh-huh. I honestly see you being a freaking kick-ass business person, dude. Like you're going to create really cool companies with really cool content with very culturally, like, like, I don't know, like it keeps up like a company that keeps up with modern times that actually really fucking helps people. You have all the fucking skill sets. You're really great at editing. You're so far ahead of, what everyone else in pharmacy is thinking you're going to do really well i have no doubt about it i have i see you being like a ceo of uh your own company not somebody else's but it, your own you know, it's kind of crazy that you say that because um so i gotta give a shout out to my best friend um yeah. he's been my best friend we we grew up in like a small ass apartment right next to each other for like yeah. 17 18 years yeah. in a really bad town uh, my friend mark we always talk about this because he's right now getting a degree in business sure. um but uh, obviously I think what people, this is, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like people take the misconception that what they get their degree in or whatever they're working as, that's what they're living as. Like they, there's no way you can branch out and have multiple sources of income, yeah. multiple things that you're managing. 
So for me and him, it's like, uh, I guess, I, I don't want to say I chose pharmacy because it's only safe, but it's a career. Like you can't, you can become an entrepreneur without getting a degree. So for me and him, we want to get our careers, work a couple of years, and but we also want to work on a business together and yeah. then see like what we, what else we want to contribute like to the world instead of just yeah. working a day nine to five, like what else can we contribute? What else can we leave for our kids that when we, when we get through life and stuff, what can they have to work with, you know, or someone yeah, else? That's like have. fucking my dream right there. Legacy, bro. Like yeah. leg- leaving a legacy behind, leaving something that actually means something to people, man. I fucking love it, dude. Like, dude, you're way up, like ahead of your time. I thought, keep in mind, dude, I've talked to a lot of freaking students mm-hmm. and I've also talked to, I talk to a lot of business owners every single day because I have different clients um, uh-huh. who are different, interested in like different uh, business models like Amazon FBA, real estate, like closing, marketing. I talk to all these like different business people, but I see something in you, man. Like I've, t- I talk to a lot of people a day and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that said it. You know, I'm pretty sure there's other people that probably recognize that too, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing, it's like great talking to someone like you because not everyone understands, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like say for like my parents, like they, they work really hard jobs and yeah. they spend a lot of money to get us to college and things like that. So they want to make sure that we're set with something that's secure and that's totally yeah. understandable because yeah. they don't want to see us struggle. So, um, I think with my parents, they know, I think becoming a pharmacist is, is good for them because they know that I'm set with something no matter what. Yeah. But for me, the way I look at things, like the more I grow older, the more like my mind like starts thinking about like what else like I could do. Like I, I start thinking more creatively, like creatively where I can put my, where can I put my money now? Like once I make my money, where can I put my money? Instead of just like keeping it saved in a bank account, like there's, there's gotta be more because my my parents, they've done so much, but they also had to play it safe because they didn't have a lot of room to work with. But for me, uh, I have this opportunity. That's so now. good. You recognize, and this is something that I'm glad that you recognize too, is like um, you understand their situation back in the day because my family was the same way. They didn't really have that much money, man. And yeah. so they had to have certain habits and certain go certain career choices because they didn't have that opportunity. But our generation is going to be very, very different, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, as you're talking to, I was, uh, <laughs> I was actually really thinking about like, uh, so one of the most controversial videos I've ever done was like, uh-huh. don't do pharmacy. Yeah. I've I seen that one. Yeah. And I was, uh, I, I, before I launched it, I was like, do I really want to do this? Because this is really throwing myself like under the under bus. The bus yeah. But I think people get it twisted sometimes, like when they watch that video, because they uh-huh. think like, Hey, Kevin's all anti-pharmacy and shit. But if you watch it really closely, I'm talking to a certain demographic, right? I'm talking to those the same people I was telling you about. The people yeah. get accepted and just go with it, you know. Bingo. I yeah. and people are like, "Man, you're you're not good for pharmacy." I was like, "Hold up. Guess what I just did for you guys? I helped people who were not sure about pharmacy." Be like, hey, I don't want to do pharmacy anymore. Uh-huh. I just freed up your fucking job market, so you should be thinking. Yeah, but, uh, I know. it's not even that, but it's just like some people, like sometimes, like, um, like man, like, I think um, we don't need any more pharmacists just in it for the money these days. You know what I mean? I don't know why I brought that up. I, I just thought it would be really cool as a content creator to one content creator to be, like talk about my most controversial video, man. And no, <laughs> I, I remember seeing that and. The weird thing is with YouTube is people tend to get offended or like it, it they get really triggered. I, I guess that's the word. Like I, I remember the second video I made was why you should or should not go to pharmacy. It was like a basic ass video, like listed yeah. like really basic things like you know, if you don't like science and stuff. Then yeah. people kept commenting, oh, you just want to go to med school and you didn't get in. Like, why do you have MCAT books? <laughs> Trolls. I was like, <laughs> man, like. I have MCAT books because my sister went to med school. I was just showing you the science courses. Like it was like a really stupid video, but I think a lot of people kind of, they, they throw around the word saturation, things like yeah. that. And it makes sense for them to be scared. But um, I think you, they should gather information and create their own opinions instead of um, like everyone's opinion on everything is going to be different, but like they expect everyone to be the same person and everyone yeah. to follow the same trend. Yeah, they project their own values on you and stuff like that and expect everyone to fall in line. But I also have to say something like this too. Like 
if your heart is really in pharmacy. So you know what's really funny about that video? I got a lot of, lot of comments and emails like saying, hey, Kevin, thank you. You've helped me decide not to go in pharmacy. But mm -hmm. those same freaking videos that are like, thank you, Kevin, actually made me really want to go into pharmacy now. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. How can, how can I release the same fucking video that yeah. says like one thing that polarizes people? And that's the thing. Like that is compelling content that I feel so glad that I put put out those videos man because it helped so many freaking people that way but you shouldn't be scared of that like to your point you shouldn't be scared of saturation if this is really really something you want to do mm -hmm. and yeah. i think like um like what people don't understand is that the opportunity I, it's kind of it's kind of like some people just don't understand like what jobs are actually in pharmacies so it's yeah. kind of hard to list that to them like everything you can do but yeah. man, like depending on your personality type, you can do a variety of different things. And it just depends on who you are. Yeah. Because I know people that are going to be great retail pharmacists, but I also know people that are going to be great in the hospital. Yeah. Um, and then um, what other things that people don't understand is that med school, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's glorified, but somewhat it is because um, my sister went through it. And you, they, a lot of people think that once you go to med school, like everyone becomes a surgeon. But it becomes like your scores, like a lot of people have to go to internal medicine, family medicine, because the mm. specialties are competitive. Yeah. Only a certain percentage actually become a surgeon. And that's, then why don't we correlate that with what happens in pharmacy? Like the best, best students will get a nice job. Well, yeah. the best students in med school are going to become a surgeon. Like the, if they want to become a surgeon, they'll become a surgeon. Yeah. But I think people forget about that because a lot of people don't mention that. Um, yeah. And and that's kind of forgotten because the whole doctor thing, like, oh, I get a doctor next to my name. And I, I remember watching a video and you said, like, people don't go to pharmacy school because you want a doctor next to your name because no one's going to care about that. Only your insurance company will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you got to let go of that. You got to let go of that, like, ego, certain viewpoint that you have because people kind of have this viewpoint of doctors where they're all knowing and like a lot of doc like pharmacists help a lot of doctors in the hospital. And it's failed that it's, it's not recognized as much because they don't, pharmacists just don't get the respect. And I don't think pharmacists, they've become very happy with their lives and they get a good amount of money. So to them, it doesn't matter that much, but um, there's not a lot of people advocating to how important pharmacists are. Like um, yeah. the teachers that I have that work in ph like hospital pharmacy, man, like the amount of knowledge that they have, it's absolutely insane. Like my, my uncle who works in the hospital, he goes, man, the hospital wouldn't be able to function without a pharmacist yeah is, that's kind of that's kind of like a things that people don't know that i know that that make me a little bit more motivated than yeah but i was kind of advocated like a lot more pharmacists that's why I, I you know what like for me i can only advocate for a certain part of pharmacy right like i'm mm -hmm. like i never did hospital i can't really talk about that shit that's not really my thing so people ask me residency questions i'm like Dude, why are you asking me? I don't even have, but I can bring on people, right? Because I have, yeah. like, I was one of the first, like, major YouTube uh, pharmacy channel. So I do that. But um, why, why I bring that up was um, I think, like, pharmacy needs better marketing. People need to know what we, we actually do out in society and what, we, what value we add to the marketplace. Because the truth is, if we don't, guess what? We're going to get automated and no one, no one is going to, no one's going oh, to yeah. need a pharmacist. If we can't clearly talk about what we do, what we add value to, to the marketplace, we're, we're going to be fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, man, people like shit on retail, yeah. but I can't tell you the amount of times problems arise where doctors make mistakes where my pharmacist corrects it. Like the amount of questions, of you know, firsthand how much, how much a robot wouldn't be able to handle retail yeah like, the questions you get like and it's a lot of respect to them because a lot of people come to the pharmacy and just ask general questions because they don't want to go to a doctor they yeah. can't afford a doctor and the pharmacists like they've been amazing with answering questions getting the patient to the lowest price looking up discount codes like it's the little stuff that people just don't know and they kind of assume like i remember do you know that that guy who makes the videos with like lambos and like books in his garage or whatever Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez. He he made a comment about pharmacists being uh, automated and we could be replaced by robots. It's just like things like that that you know a lot of people don't understand or they haven't seen firsthand. So. I definitely see, well to be fair, I actually do see a lot of the role like a lot of pharmacists 
like the a lot of the things within pharmacy being automated but right. that's not necessarily a bad thing especially if you're talking about look at it sucks if you're a pharmacy technician but yeah, if you're yeah. a pharmacist the one thing that you cannot automate and that's why <laughs> I, I say like i say things like hey pharmacists will be automated well i say it for a good freaking reason is just to really drive home the point that hey at the end of the day the value that we bring to the marketplace is making people feel like they're in good hands with their health. We are the Q, we're essentially the QB. Mm-hmm. Where like if you have a good pharmacist, where are your patients going to drop off their meds to the pharmacist that they trust? Oh, yeah. so like yeah, so we're the we're the point of contact. We're the central hub. You mm-hmm. have all these specialists fucking sending their drugs to us, right? We we're, we're the liaison between the um the insurance companies, doctors' offices, all these different people. We're essentially the QBs of uh, under under underappreciated QBs of healthcare, man. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I think um, the whole whole like case like with the automated thing that happens with a lot of careers. Like as yeah. technology advances, it's gonna get like that. Like even if you're in medicine, like there's gonna be new surgery machines that can help do things where you don't need a person for that. Anymore. Dude, but, did you hear about those Chinese like robot ma- the, the machines in China? So they have a no. shortage of surgeons there. And there's a real big push from China to start building these machines that actually perform surgery on people. Wow. And that is fucking scary because that shows you that, hey, AI is catching up. But like I said, as long as there's people, like that's why I'm so focused on like things like marketing and sales and all these things because these are relationship type of things. You cannot build a relationship unless you're like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do you know, like one of those Japanese like <laughs> otakus, man, who build a relationship. You can't build a relationship with a robot, man. And people want to make sure that they're being helped out and like confident with their health. And I think pharmacists are great, great, like, like, I don't, that, I, I see a lot of things getting automated, but I don't see pharmacists getting completely automated. But our role definitely has to change beyond what they see like in the back of the back of the pharmacy. So. Yeah, I think I think what pharmacy school I guess learning about things like sometimes in pharmacy there's no like clear answer. It's all about opinions like when it comes to patient treatment. Like sure. something I was just studying before I hopped on this thing was like infectious disease. I so there's, not, there's there's you know there's a baseline right or wrong answer, but there's certain modifications you can make, but that comes up to the choice of how you feel with like your opinion on things and things like that. So, yeah. um, there's certain discrepancies that a robot wouldn't be able to, you know, calculate because it takes a little bit more of thinking and further thought. Um, and just a, um, like I guess it's great. There's a lot of gray area in pharmacy, and it's yeah, not it's like a lot of gray area. algorithm. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. but I I see that as a good thing. Auto, if automation happens to pharmacy, I see that as a good thing because it's just going to support, right? But at the same time. If you have automated machines like helping you do daily tasks and stuff, less 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 uh less like support in other areas. Like we probably won't need pharmacy technicians as much. We probably yeah. won't need as many pharmacists if uh if a lot of these tasks are being helped out, right? Which is good because pharmacists we're busy as fuck, dude, all the yeah. time. Like I think that's even sit down. You guys barely even sit down. You, know, you work like twelve hour shifts and you're standing Bro. there. Bro, I remember, oh, dude, it was so bad. I remember this one time, like, I had to pee so fucking bad. And I remember I was like, okay, you know what? I was the only pharmacist there, right? Because oh. it was a grocery pharmacy. And I remember I was like, okay, it's 10 a.m. right now. Um, let me just do some, like, let me just do this really quick and I'll just go to the restroom, right? Uh-huh. I held it all the way to fucking the end of my shift at like 6 p.m. <laughs> I was like, Fuck me, dude! Like this is crazy. Yeah, it gets insane. Yeah, man. But you know, I I think that's when pharmacists really have to stand up for their rights too. And I was kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of beta back then, man. And <laughs> I I like I think like it's scary to stand up, but I think like a lot of time there's I mean, dude, we can go on about like how pharmacists are treated and shit, but it's gonna be like a three hour Joe Rogan uh, podcast. Man. And I think as a student, like, I can't give, like, the best answer for, like, treatment and stuff, but for yeah. someone like you, like, from what I've heard from pharmacists that work in, like, retail and things like that, yeah, it's obvious that, you know, we don't get the respect that, like, the, no- the amount of knowledge we know and the amount of help we give, like, a lot of people don't acknowledge that, and it's easy to just, like, disregard all that, but 
if you're actually in the pharmacy doing the work, that's when you know how much effort you really put in. Yeah, man. Like, uh, I, I put in a lot of time, sweat and stuff. And it sucks, like, sometimes not being appreciated. But, yeah. I mean, that's sometimes, like, the... That's sometimes, like, you know, when you're so... That's the balance between being so accessible and being an absolute specialist. Imagine if you could go get a fucking any type of surgery, like just like the pharmacy counter. You just walk yeah, up, just go there, and just like, uh, hey, I like a fucking okay. neurosurgery, bro. And like, okay, fine, that's no problem. We'll just we'll do it in 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes. What it takes that fucking long? People, yeah. Like when people don't pay for things, they don't value things. So I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. Like if 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 you're not paying me for advice, it's just regular advice from a guy, right? But yeah. if I'm paying thousands from like a doctor, I'm like, man, I'm gonna pay attention. Like I gotta respect this guy. He's giving me stuff that I can't get anywhere. But in reality, yeah. man, if you went on the internet, you'll probably find the answer. Yeah. yeah, positioning of the pharmacist, like in terms of marketing, is pretty weak actually, and doesn't really set us up for an authority. But we get to help a lot of people but there is a there is that problem still and i don't know i don't know a good way to fix it to be honest with you but um yeah man like i hope yeah i don't i don't have a good i don't i don't have a good freaking answer man yeah I, I think i think um for me it's like if i go into industry i might just forget about like it's kind of like people in the position when they're in that position they had to advocate it because if i go into industry i won't be able to relate to them but if you're um, in the position and you can fight for it, I think that's now is the time to really make like the, the surge for it. Yeah, tunnel vision. You gain tunnel vision. And that's why I like having different guests on my, that's why I've been starting this pharmacy. Like I have two different podcasts, right? Entrepreneur Next Door and a pharmacy podcast, right? And I think like the more that we just have more, we just have conversations like these and kind of capture them the more people will kind of understand what we do and the behind the scenes and kind of show the personality behind us too, man. So anyways, uh, I don't want to keep you too long. I pro you probably got exams to study for and stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> dude, we should definitely do a part two, man, if you're open to it, man. Yeah, of course. And I mean, I, I usually whenever I do things like this or make videos, it's just like my study break. So right yeah. now where I'm sitting, I just have like, food yogurt like I've, I've, <laughs> all I've had like people don't understand man like, the grind is crazy when you're studying like yeah you, you get to eat sometimes you're like you gotta it's, it's crazy but it's always appreciated like I love doing this type of stuff because man if I didn't want to do it I wouldn't have done it but yeah it's, it's, I just like talking about things like this because it, it starts a conversation yeah where, yeah I mean how about this we'll end off with this um first of all do you want any shameless plugs um yeah i'll just go right ahead follow me on instagram coded like a capsule uh, yeah. it's almost impossible to forget <laughs> yeah that's a pretty cool name and watch, watch, yeah. watch my youtube channel um you could just search my name up oh, like the capsule but uh yeah i'm gonna like it so i think that's basically it um if you guys have any questions ask me anything uh, best of luck with everything that the viewers are up to last question um yeah. somebody's thinking about pharmacy school uh -huh. um, best advice for them to figure That's out advice. what All right, so, or not. Um, it seems like a long journey, but it's a lot shorter than you think. Make friends, talk to people, gain advice from people, but make sure you make memories. Um, you're never going to remember studying till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. You just suppress that memory. But <laughs> remember the time you have with your friends, um, your experiences, your jobs, things that you can pass on to your kids. So I say make a lot of memories and you should be good to go. So you'll get the pharmacy school. Great advice, Sagar. Wait, that's how you say your name, right? It's all good. It's all good. Fuck. Dude, I've been yeah, trying to get good. your name yeah. right this whole fucking time, bro. <laughs> all right, man. So great having you. We'll end that's this great. right now. All right. Thanks, man. See you.